Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching this in the world. Welcome to the second video of this channel, Justin here. Today we have a Hellbros Invincible. This one's from the 1960s, I believe. Um, but this one, this one's damaged, this one's non-running. Um, it looks like it's been dropped because the second's hand, if I flip it over shortly, the, second ha the second's hand, the second's hand is rattling around in the front glass. So first and foremost, it's not running. I can't seem to wind it up. Um, so yeah, let's take this thing apart. Let's get cracking. Let's take this thing apart, give it a service and see if there's anything obvious. Hopefully we can get this one fixed and sorted. So a bit of background on Hellbros. Who are Hellbros? I had a little look, but it was quite difficult actually. Um, not much information on Hellbros. What I did find is Hellbros is an American company again, same like the last Waltham watch I did in the first video. And they started in the early 1900s, but they only survived until around the 1960s, 1970, um, until they ultimately just either closed or they changed name, changed ownership. Hellbros had a few product lines. They had a, like an entry level line and a somewhat higher level line, um, but they weren't too popular, which is why it's quite difficult to get much information on Hellbros because it's not one of them brands that seem to be too well recognized globally. I think it was only really over in the US that they had any, any traction. Um, but what Hellbros did, I don't think they made anything in-house. What they did is they made the, they had their own faces, they had their own, their own dials, but they just, they would import Swiss movements. So some of the movements would be sort of medium range, some would be high end. So today, this watch here, this is one of the cheaper ones, I believe, and I picked this up for about $40. So a broken watch, $40. Maybe I paid too much, maybe I didn't, who knows. But let's try and get this thing running. Let's get this thing apart, and let's try and get this thing run, running again. The first thing I've noticed here, you would have seen me use it, but this movement, I was looking for two screws to, to take the movement out from the back of the case. But this one, I actually had to, it had no, it had no screws holding it in place. So what I had to do is I had to get my crystal grabber, my whatever that tool is called, and remove the, the glass on the front. The, and the dial actually come out on the, the front of the case. Um, but everything out now. And I've just taken off the dial. The dial in very good condition. Um, so I'm not sure if this watch was used or just, or kept in a drawer, um, but, but the, the dial is very well kept. So moving on from the first video I did, the as mentioned, I'm not too experienced in, in watchmaking. This is now only the third watch that I would have that I would have taken apart and serviced or attempted to service. Um, so this one a bit more complicated than the than the last watch I did. The last one was as basic as they got, just with the basic hour, minute, and seconds hands. This one's got an added complication. This one has actually got a, a date wheel. So this is going to be a lesson for me. Um, but let's let's get to it. Let's continue with the disassembly. So we can see here. I'm just taking apart the the calendar complication, and I'm just trying to look to see how, one how it works, um, and two just to try and memor memorize where everything goes. Uh, just so when I so when I go to reassemble the thing, hopefully I can sort of gauge where where bits go. So here I'm just checking just checking how things work and how things engage with each other and how it actually enables that calendar wheel to, to rotate. So I'm taking off some of these, some of these wheels and some of these parts. Um, and this is the, this is the main wheel actually that it's got this silver, it's a brass wheel with this steel looking leg on it. Um, I'm sure that's not the right term, but it's got that leg on it that actually kicks over the calendar wheel to knock the date over each day. But now the calendar, now the calendar complication is off. Now everything should be a bit more familiar to myself. So now we've just got the basic, uh, we've got the sort of the, ru the running train and then the standard components for this part going forward. So same thing like last time, this watch didn't wind up. I couldn't wind it up. So I'm just checking there and it did wind up. So because the the mainspring did depower, so it did have some energy stored in it, but maybe 
maybe it was stored up, but the, the, the watch couldn't run, so it couldn't wind back down. So maybe that explains why I was having problems trying to wind it up. So I couldn't get the thing to run. Um, the, the watch was clearly, clearly, was fully wound, uh, but it couldn't release any energy because this, what I'm seeing here, the balance is not kicking over. It looks like it's jammed. So maybe this, something's happened here. I hope it's not broken. Um, but time will tell. We will, we will continue to disassemble and I'll, I'll inspect everything later just to see if there's any obvious damage. Um, but I'll just continue uh, and I'll take this, I'll take the balance wheel off. This is, this is something we have to be quite delicate with because the balance wheel has a hairspring and it's called a hairspring because the spring is so fine. The, fi the, the spring is very fine and could be easily damaged. So I'm trying to take care, just trying to get this thing out. I don't want to yank it out and distort the spring in any way, but this didn't run well. So I'm going to have to inspect that with the microscope later. But first and foremost, I'll just continue to strip this thing down um, and just give it a visual. Everything I'm taking apart, I'm just giving it a look just to see if there's anything obvious that may have caused it not to run. Here I have the the pallet fork uh, and the pallet bridge. This is one of them them delicate parts of the watch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this, and this could also be one of the reasons why the watch wasn't running. So this could be damaged. We don't know. Um, but again, I'll remove it now. We can't really see much with the with the naked eye. So I'm gonna have to put this one again under the microscope later, just to inspect these components, just to see if there's any damage to them. Hopefully not again. But we'll get the microscope out later and have a good look. We have the ratchet wheel here and the crown wheel. So the ratchet wheel coming off now. crown wheel to follow but this crown wheel has reverse thread so to untighten that screw you actually have to screw it the the opposite way in which you would you would think the, the opposite way in which you would normally unscrew things and once this wheel is off we can see the main plate so I'm looking here normally there's a shim on this crown wheel normally there's a shim between it but that one just seemed to be one piece so there's no shim so I'm gonna have to keep that in mind so when I go to reassemble I don't look for something that doesn't exist the click being removed now this is a mechanical watch so to to power it up you have to manually wind it up and to prevent the power from releasing straight away this click this click prevents the ratchet wheel from from going in the unwinding position so lesson learned from the video number one make note of how the click spring is in position because the last watch I forgot and it was it was around 10 minutes just try, doing trial and error fit and remove fit and remove fit and remove just because I didn't take any photos so that one I just made double sure that I knew exactly how it comes off But now we have the, the barrel bridges off. So now we're, trying to, we're starting to see the guts of this watch. And it looks, it looks very clean. It looks for the age of this watch, it looks very clean. It's not been left out in the rain or in the dust or anywhere like that. It looks like it may have just been stored in, a, in someone's cupboard, maybe. Um, maybe not used routinely. And it could have been damaged for a long time, we don't know. Removing the train wheel bridge here. So this one, this one states that this watch has got 17 joules. And the train wheel is coming out here. So in a watch, um, a watch train 
typically has four wheels. So you have the main barrel, this one here, and then you have the second wheel, third wheel, and then the escape wheel, the one I've just removed there. So them four wheels, they transfer from when you manually wind the watch up and store the energy in the main barrel. So you could call that the first wheel. Then when the energy is released, it goes from the main barrel to the second wheel, the second wheel to the third wheel, the third wheel to the escape wheel. It's that transfer and reduction in, in rotation speed throughout them, that train that, see, that, that governs how the watch runs and how quick each hand should rotate. So there was another bridge there for the center wheel. Um, so the bridge was off and I take the center wheel off. And straight on to the keyless works. So I flip the movement over. The keyless works is what switches when you pull the crown out. So the crown is in to, and you rotate clockwise to wind up the, the, main, the main barrel. And then if you pull it out, you can then set the hands. So that this complication, the, the, the keyless works, it just switches between them two, them two settings. One thing I was just very careful with there, the yoke spring is very fine. And again, these things can fly off and they fly off and you would never know where they went. So every time I'm taking these springs off, I've always got my eyes. I never take my eyes off them. But there we have it. The movement has been disassembled. That was quite, quite easy actually, pain free. And I couldn't see anything obvious that could be causing the watch not to run. So what we'll do, we'll get the the microscope out and we will inspect some of the more finer components and some any of the components that I believe could potentially result in this in the watch not working. The first thing I'm going to check is the escape wheel. So this one I'm just looking at it from a pro from a side view and just looking at the pivots but both of them seem intact. Same for the pallet fork I've just got it looking at the pivots right there profile view here just to see the pallet stones. Um, they looked okay, but the pallet bridge had some dirt. I didn't know if that was a crack. I got a, I got some pegwood in there and it just seemed to be a bit of dirt, maybe some residual, some old oil. So that one also looks okay. Now we have the balance wheel. Um, and here I see a problem. This is not right. So I'll explain that in a minute, but I'll put the balance back onto the onto the main plate and I'm just looking at the impulse jewel to make sure it sits between the banking pins which it does and it rotates freely so there's no problem with the balance but there was a problem with the the setting the the I don't know what it's called this part here so what was wrong with that is that was in the wrong position so I just had to I just had to manipulate that back into the into the into the correct position and once it was once it was put back in place so everything looks okay for now um but i'll give everything a clean and as explained in the previous video my cleaning process is very <laughs> crude so you saw there i'm just using lighter fluid and a, an ultrasonic machine and then what i do is i put it through another two rinses so some, i use some ipa for another couple of rinses so we check the parts on the microscope and we we, we found a few things that needed adjusting, especially for the main, for the balance spring, but nothing that stood out that would prevent the watch from running. So maybe it was just overbanked, um, where maybe the impulse jewel was on the wrong side of the pallet fork. Um, so what we'll do, we'll give it a good service and we'll oil, everything's been cleaned up. We'll oil everything that needs to be oiled, grease everything that needs to be greased. And we will just cross our fingers and hope it starts. If it doesn't, then we can do some more fault finding. For reassembly, we'll start with the, the train of wheels. So these go onto the main plate. And there's a specific order. So I took loads of photos. Before I took the wheels out, I took loads of photos to know the orientation and the, the locations that they go. But one thing I'm checking for is just to make sure that the pivots go into the, into the jewels. Uh, and then we've got this train bridge going over the top and I've got to align see these three purple jewels I need to align the pivots of the second wheel the third wheel and the escape wheel with all three wheels before I can I can clamp down so I've got the loop out here 
just to make sure I can get a close up, just to ensure that everything is in position. And then secondly, we can put on the, the, the barrel bridge. The barrel bridge has only got one hole to line up, it's just for the barrel. So this one, not as difficult. This one's quite a, quite a simple one to install. Here you can see my, I've got my oils, I've got my greases. And what we're gonna use here is, I can't remember what it's called, but I've got a red one and I've got a blue one. Um, I just know the red one is for medium friction parts um, and the blue one is more like a grease. So the red's like an oil, the grease, the blue one is more for the high friction parts. So more for things like the keyless works. So on, on all them posts, I put the red grease. Um, again, I should probably look it up, but I'm just gonna call them red grease, blue grease. Easy to understand. The click going back in position now, so I've put the spring in position. I've screwed the click down and I'm just giving it a check just to make sure that when I push it one way, that the spring engages and the spring returns it. The next thing to go on is the crown wheel. The crown wheel learned from my mistake from video number one. The crown wheel only goes on one way because there's a recess on one side of the of that of that cog. So the, the crown wheel only is it only goes on one direction. Then we have the, the ratchet wheel going on here. This one's quite easy to know because it's got the, the nice Hellbros sign. So this one's quite an easy one to install. So I'm gonna flip the watch over and we're gonna start on the keyless works. So the keyless works, I really like this part. This part is it's a very simple complication, but because there's no fine parts, it's less risk. So the, it's like the pressure is off when you're, when you're reinstalling this part of the watch, the pressure's off, you can just relax and you don't have to worry about damaging anything. So um, I really enjoy this part. So time to relax and reassemble with this part. Cannon pinion going on there, and this wheel. I don't know what that wheel is called, but next up is putting this spring back back into position. So the spring just makes sure the setting lever goes returns back to um, back to the neutral position. But again, I'm taking extra care with this because I do not want this spring flying off. Um, so both eyes open, concentration at 100 and just I'm um, double checking, triple checking to make sure that that is fully seated and I want to get this plate on straight away just to make sure that if it does pop out, it doesn't go playing Houdini on me. Keyless works reinstalled so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click it over and just give it a check just make sure that everything is moving as it should and that there's no hang-ups there's no issues with the reassembly but all looks good all looks okay now we have this is the the other complication this complication is for the calendar wheel for the date wheel so again there's another spring there which I'm taking extra care to install. Then we have the calendar wheel on top. And then we've got this plate, this, this plate on top to hold, everything in, to hold everything in place. So the plate is held in position with three screws and the screws are tiny. Um, I guess because they need to, one, be out of the way of the, the dial above it. And two, they don't have much depth to go down. So the screws are very small for this part of the watch. So they'd be quite easily lost. So you must pay attention when you're removing them and storing them and make sure you don't knock them with your hand when you put them aside on the mat before you install. So 
once the plate's on, I'll put the hour wheel on and then we can just give it a rough check just to make sure that that calendar wheel works. So you're looking at that brass wheel with the, the, the steel leg on it. Um, and as I move the, as I rotate the crown, that leg is moving. So everything looks engaging, everything looks good. So what we will do is we will flip the watch back over and we will then try and finalize the assembly. The pallet fork is now going in position and I'm just again using my loop just to double check that the pivot is where it should be before I put this pallet bridge on. And I'll probably be, I'll do the same um, so that when everything is here we don't want to damage the pallet fork. If that's damaged then the I'd need a replacement which to try and get a replacement may be not so easy. So once I've confirmed everything okay I will clamp that down, give the watch a little wind, and I'm just checking that the pallet fork, just checking that the pallet fork flips over to ensure that power is being delivered through the, tra the train wheels to the pallet fork. And once all looks good, we can get onto the final parts, the balance wheel. So the moment of truth, will this thing run? Yes, it will. Um, that's a sigh of relief and it looks like it's running well so it looks like the amplitude is quite high so I'm happy this this is good uh, it's always good to see a watch come back to life um, especially when they weren't running when when it comes on your bench and especially when you're a, a newbie like myself and you don't have too much experience now that we know the watch is up and running and is back to life we can finalize the final touches so I've got the microscope out here and just showing what I'm doing, I'm oiling the jewels, the jewels for the, the train of wheels. So this is very difficult to see with the naked eye. So I prefer doing this with the microscope. But as you can tell, I'm not too great at doing this oiling yet. I need a lot more practice. I feel like I'm putting on far too much oil or not, not any at all. So this is definitely something I need a bit more practice on. But we have to start somewhere, right? So we've got the hour wheel back on. I'll flip the watch over. And I'm just going to rotate the crown and just make sure I'm looking for the date, the calendar wheel to flip. Which there, it just, it just flipped one day. It's exactly what we wanted to see. So, all good. So, on to the finishing touches. We got the dial, which I've just given a blast with some air to try and get rid of any dust. This dial is, this dial is, it's unique. Um, it's a bit weird. So, it's like silvery black with these blue indices, uh, blue and chrome indices. So, this is, a, I think it's a unique face. I'm not really a, a dial man, but I don't mind this one. This one's quite good. What we're doing here is we're just clamping the the dial. Has got two feet, which need to be pinched in position with some with two screws. So I'm just putting some light pressure to hold the 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 dial down to the main plate and then screwing it down, clamping it in position, and rechecking the date wheel. So because this watch has a date, we need to make sure that when we align the hands and install the hands, that the date flips over to the next day, then we know it's midnight. So then I can now install the hands. So it starts with the hour, hour hand, followed by the minute hand, and then the second hand will be last.
And here we can see as soon as I put the second hand on, it starts ticking away. So I know that second hand is in position and I can just press it home. And there we have it. So I just need to do one final check of the hands just to make sure they don't hit any hit each other and snag on each other but they look okay they look good and the alignment looks good to me so I'm going to chuck this on the time grapher and you can see one it's running it's not running very well but it is running and I believe the problem is with the the hairspring the main balance wheel so I think there's a kink in it I've tried to adjust it this is as good as I can get but the beat error is so out. If I improve the beat error, the rate then gets out. So I think I need to manipulate that string just to make sure that it's seated where it should be. Um, but that's not something I can do right now. I will definitely do that for another video. I need to buy some more tools, but let's save that one for another day. For now, I'm gonna get this watch back in the case. The movement goes in the case in the front, it's a front loader. And I'll use my crystal grabber. What's the name for this tool? Someone tell me. I keep forgetting the name of this one. I'm going to call it crystal grabber. That makes sense. But you just grab the crystal, pinch it down. Make sure that it is where it should be. And then press it home. there we have it last thing remains let's put the crown back in position so I'll flip it press that one back and we have a watch that is now running so I'm happy this is this is good this is a good start it's not running as it should and it could definitely run better but I think as mentioned earlier, I think we need to adjust the, the hairspring. That's going to need to come out. It's going to need to be removed and either replaced or manipulated into a into where it should be. But let's do that another time. As a watch service goes, that one was quite straightforward. Um, as mentioned, this is, this is something new to me. This is just a hobby for myself. So I'm not an expert by any means. I'm not a professional watchmaker by any means. This is, again, the third... This is only the third watch that I've taken apart and reassembled. And this one was not so bad. Um, the movement is nice. The dial is nice. All around a decent watch. And I'm glad we got it back up and running. Thanks for coming along and sticking around. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Maybe comment what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy. Because it really does help the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video, which should be up in about a week or two weeks time. But until then, take care and I'll see you again.